Hello and welcome to the Mini FRC 2017 tutorial video on how to build and program your Mini FRC robot. In this video, we'll first cover exactly how you're supposed to build the robot and then the use of the driver station and programming the robot itself. Welcome to part one of the video tutorial. We'll be covering exactly how to build the Mini FRC robot. You can see here, basically, we have all the parts we need to build a robot aside from the frame, which can be made out of anything. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything you're going to need. So of course our base platform is Arduino, so we have an Arduino Uno here. On top of it, we'll be putting the Adafruit V1 motor shield for Arduino. Optionally, we have some L29 3D chips that normally sit on top of the motor shield here. We have extras because we can actually do something called piggybacking, which I'll show you later. Of course, we also have four motors for the robot. These are just standard, um, you can get these from China or eBay or anywhere for very cheap. And I already have wires on mine. You probably won't have wires in yours. It's pretty easy to put them on just with some solder. Of course, also we have a 9-volt battery pack. Note, using the uh, actual 9-volt batteries is not recommended because they cannot deliver as much amperage as something like this can. So we recommend you use something like this, and I also have a, um, a switch soldered onto mine. Last thing we have here is an HCO5 Bluetooth chip, or an HCO6, my bad. Uh, HCO5s will work as well, but technically you're supposed to use a resistor with them, and they have some extra functions that we're not using on the robot, so the HCO6 is preferred. I have mine already just on a, a breadboard, just for demonstration with some wires sticking out of it. So for the first step that we have here, we're going to be setting up our motor shield to work with our robot configuration. The first thing to do is note that we have two pins next to our battery hookups that need a jumper over them. Like so. This allows power to go from the motor shield down to the Arduino, so when your Arduino isn't hooked up to a computer, it can still get powered by the battery pack. The next thing to do is make sure you have female pins soldered onto here so you can actually plug stuff into the top of the motor shield. Since the motor shield does hook up to all the pins in the Arduino, we're still going to need some extras to hook up our Bluetooth and any other robot functions that we want. Note that these are on analog pins 0 through 5, but we can reference them as digital pins 14 through 19. We also have a 5 volt in ground. So once you have your motor shield configured like this, you can go ahead and put it on top of the Arduino. I apologize, I'm doing this through a viewfinder. This presses right on down. And there we go. Now we can begin hooking up our motors. So later on in the code, we're going to be referencing these motors by the import that they're on. You'll notice that on the motor shield, we actually have these imports labeled. You can see M2 is there. On the other side, we have an M3, M4. This one must be M1. Now, in the stock robot code, M1 is our front left motor, M2 is our front right, M3 is our back left, and M4 is our back right. Now, of course, they don't have to be in this order, but if you want to make things easier, you might as well make sure that, so let's say that this is our, our front left motor, you can go ahead and plug it into M1, which is this port. Okay, I've gone ahead and added our motors to the motor shield. I've hooked them all up. One thing to note is that you do not use the center port, that even though it says ground, you do not use the center port for our motors. You use the outside two ones. The next step is hooking up the Bluetooth, which is pretty easy. Obviously, we have our 5 volt and ground wires that are already hooked up to the Bluetooth, but one thing that's kind of confusing is the RX and TX wires. When you hook up your Bluetooth module, you can use the labels on the back to figure out which wires are which. In this case, I'm using the green wire as the RX wire. That's this one. Now, the RX on the Bluetooth needs to go to the TX port in software. It's not RX to RX. It's RX to TX and TX to RX. So on the analog pins in the default code, the, the zeroth one, or the fourteenth digital pin, is RX, which means that our green RX pin on the Bluetooth actually has to go to the TX port. It's just flip-flopped like this. I'm not sure why they do it that way. I think it's just to confuse people. 
And then of course our five folding ground pins will just go to the five folding ground in the motor shield. And that's that hooked up. The last thing of course is to hook up the battery pack. Positive goes to M plus, negative goes to ground. Okay, I've got the wires connected. So now that's all left to do is just a quick test everything is to turn it on and just check for blinking lights. Of course we should have our green light on the motor shield. Our Bluetooth should be blinking. That tells us it's disconnected but powered. And of course there'll be some lights on the Arduino itself that are turned on. The last thing you might want to do to your electronics setup is piggyback the motor shield. The motor shield uses L29 3D chips here to power the motors hooked up to the ports. These L29 3Ds can work in parallel, which means by simply stacking one on top of the other, you can get almost twice the current going to your, uh, your motors. This is useful for keeping the motor shield from overheating and also getting some extra power out of your motors. You can use the notch in the top of the chips to line things up, and while it's all powered off, simply just put the one chip on top of the other and make sure all of the leads are contacting. If the leads ever do short, usually it'll end up with one motor turning randomly and you won't know why until you realize that this chip has shifted. It's probably a good practice to glue these down once you've put them in place. So now we'll begin easing into the software side of creating a robot. The first step is to make sure you actually have all the software you need to program your robot on your computer. One of my good friends has already written an Instructables on downloading the software. However, it's a little bit outdated. All you need to do with this Instructable is follow the steps for downloading the Arduino software and AF Motor library. Now for those teams that are using a V2 motor shield, remember there's a difference between the V1 and, well, V2 and V1 uh, motor shield software, so you need to make sure you get the right version. Most of you will probably be using the V1. After you've gotten the Arduino downloaded and set up, the next step is to go ahead and get the standard package of software for Mini FRC 2017. All of the links to this stuff will be down in the description of the video, but here it is anyways. So you can see that this is all on GitHub. All you have to do is hit clone or download and download zip file. Once you've downloaded the zip file, you can extract it to a folder and then I'll just jump over to what that looks like now. So this is more or less what it looks like once you've downloaded the uh, whole software package from MiniFRC. All of this stuff up here, you can pretty much ignore unless you're curious and working on it yourself. For people who just want the driver station and the stock robot code, you're interested in this build folder and MiniFRC bot folder. We'll look at the MiniFRC bot folder because we need to get that code uploaded onto the uh, robot that we just built. I'm going to go ahead and open it in Arduino. Okay, so this is the stock robot code. So I'm going to go ahead and give a rundown of what all of this does. However, there are comments in the file that pretty much tell you what everything is and what it does. So how this software works is we're receiving a package from the driver station and we're going through that package to get all the values out of it. And then based on those values, we're applying different power levels to different motors. You can see up at the top here we're defining a new software serial or just serial connection called Bluetooth on pins 14 and 15. That's the analog 0 and analog 1 that we plugged our Bluetooth chip into. The RX and TX mess is also described up here in the comments. So in the setup we're starting our Bluetooth and we're setting all of our motor ports to drive forward at zero speed or just basically turn on. In our main loop for the Arduino software, you can see that as long as we have a Bluetooth connection, we're trying to read this thing called Z. Z is the big, it's like the header of the package the driver station will send to your robot, and all it does is ensure that the package is being received in the right order. So if our header actually does equal Z, then we begin to read the rest of the package. In the stock robot code, the package is only looking to receive two values. 0 and 1. 0 and 1 are two axis values. They could come from WS, AD on your keyboard, or the 
zero and one axis of a joystick that you have plugged in. We'll cover that in a little bit. If you want to add something to your package, you can do so in the packages config file, which I'll also cover later. But you also have to remember you have to add it in here. If you wanted to add a button for, for say, you can just uncomment this and button one will now be like the next integer in that package. Remember that everything you add here that you set the program to expect to receive in the package, you must also define at the top, like so. Once you have everything defined as you want the robot to expect to receive it as, you can come down here and actually begin applying that stuff as it's being received. So of course we have our 0 and 1, and those will be values between negative 1 and 1, and we want to turn those axes inputs into power to our motors. That's what this block of code here does. All we're doing is saying the power to the front left motors equal to our zero axis plus our one axis. And so once power front left, or whatever the variable name you choose, has that number, we go ahead and make sure that it's within the 255, negative 255 limits on the Arduino uh, motor shield software. And then we can come down here and actually apply it to the motors. Note that set speed, as I said, requires a value between negative 255 and 255, and it doesn't accept negative numbers. So if our power level is below zero, we set the motor to run backward, and then we uh, multiply the power level by negative one to make it positive. So in effect, we're really just saying run backward at 255 instead of run forwards at negative 255. After that, that's pretty much all of the code. So we're going to go ahead, save this, and then upload it to the robot that we just built. For the sake of simplicity, I've recommented button 1 so that we're only expecting to receive a 0 and a 1 axis for our default robot code. I now have the USB plugged into the Arduino, and you can see it's powering the Arduino, and I'm going to upload the code. That's basically just as simple as clicking the upload button in the top corner. So that blinking was the code being uploaded onto the robot. Now that we have the code up onto the robot, I can take a take you through a tour of the driver station and how to set up the configuration file in it and use the driver station. So now we're back into the folder you downloaded, and let's go take a look at the driver station. It's located in build exe, and if you scroll down a bit, you'll find it. You'll notice that if you just run it right off the bat, it probably flashes before you real quickly and then disappears. If it ever does this, you can always check the log file to see what caused it to disappear. We can see that it was booting up, it found the configuration.txt file, it gave us a notice that joysticks aren't enabled, which is fine, and warning could not connect to robot on specified COM port, warning normal operation is ended, expect an error message. Well, we obviously got our error message. When you see something like this, when you see these warnings, it probably has to do with the config.txt file. So let's take a look at what ours is currently configured to. This would explain the problem. So let's go ahead and set up our config.txt file. We're going to go ahead and start by typing com test. Capitalization probably matters, so try to follow it. We're setting it, we're typing test because this will put the driver station in test mode instead of trying to connect to the robot at first, which is obviously useful for testing. I'm going to go ahead and enable joystick mode as well by just typing a lowercase joystick. Next, remember our robot is expecting to receive two axes from our package, so we need to define two axes that our driver station will make up to uh, send to the robot. So we can just start by typing axis, the name of the axis, which in this case I'm just going to call it forward, and then uh, what the driver station is going to use to um, what inputs the driver station is going to take to use for this axis. In this case, I'm going to use my zeroth joystick, the first axis on the joystick zero. Now, um, I'm also going to cover, let's say, let's say you were using the keyboard instead of a joystick. Maybe you'd want your forward to be um, W and S. You can just type W and S. Now, let's say for some reason you want to use the six keys forward and the T key is backwards. Now, this will cause it to look up joystick number 6 and then try to get uh, the letter T number axis from that. To prevent this, put a hashtag in front of the 6 and now it'll work on your keyboard. But again, for now, I have a joystick in front of me, so I'm going to be using 0 and the first axis on joystick 0. 
Yeah, remember, we're still trying to look, the robot's still assuming that we're sending it two axes, so we need to define two here. So, axes for, let's see, this will be my right turning axes. And I'm still going to use joystick zero, but maybe the third axis on joystick zero. Joysticks typically are laid out so that the three axis is for yaw, and the one axis is for forward backward. That's why I'm just kind of assuming that now. Now, for everything that you can type into the uh, txt file, there's a readme that you can also open up, and that defines everything that you can type into this txt file, in this, into this configuration file. So now this is set up, I'm just going to save it real quick, close it, and we'll try opening gyrostation.exe again. This is a much better result. So this is the driver station. You can see this time we found the config.txt file. We added the forward joystick axis and the right joystick axis, and it'll tell you this is a joystick controlled axis. If you were typing a key or a hashtag in front of the number, it would show up as keyboard controlled axis or button, depending on whether or not you have an axis or a button defined. So of course, yes, joysticks enabled in file loading joystick control. Once joystick control has been loaded, you can see we've detected one joystick, and it'll actually tell you the name of the joystick, the number of axes, the current position of all the axes, and what numbers they are, and all the buttons. So by putting the driver station into test mode and loading up joysticks, it's really useful for determining what buttons and axes you have to work with. Now, of course, we scroll down a little bit, we see notice, config is set to driver station test mode. Things may act weird. <laughs> So, of course, we've set it to test mode just so we can see all this stuff without connecting to a robot. Test mode active, not connecting to robot. Driver station is now active. So now, just by moving my joystick, you can see the sliders down here are moving. And, of course, I can use, I can turn all of them and whatnot, do whatever. You'll see at the bottom here we have a live package readout. This is exactly what's being sent to the robot. You can see we have our Z header and then the two axes values separated by semicolons. Now when we're using um, Bluetooth.parse float in the Arduino file, uh, it'll get rid of those, those semicolons, so you'll just have these two numbers, and of course the Z is already read. So that is the basic driver station setup. So we've got the config file set up. It's on our computer. We've got our joystick plugged in. The battery on the robot is plugged in, turned on. We're separated from USB. We're ready to go. Except one thing. Remember, we're still not paired over Bluetooth. Hopefully you have Bluetooth on whatever computer you plan on using as your drive station. It's pretty easy to connect to your robot. In my case, I've renamed it already to Mechanimbot. However, you don't, normally it'll appear as HC06. On the day of competition, you'll be required to rename your bot so that we don't have 28 HCO6s all on the uh, Bluetooth menu. You can go ahead and pair with this because it's already here. And the default password for all HCO6s is 1234. Now that we've paired with it, or at least we're working on pairing with it, there's one last thing we have to do. The last thing we have to do here is change that COM test to the actual COM port of the robot. So now that we've paired, we can go down, go to Bluetooth, open settings, and go over to COM ports. We can see that COM5 is our outgoing port for the robot. The outgoing is the one you want. We can close it change com test to our com port and now we're ready to go with everything set up all we have left to do is to make sure the robot is powered on and run the drive station you'll notice we have our two axes just like in test mode except now we don't have the notice that we're in test mode now we are actually connected to the robot by manipulating the joystick, we are actually getting robot movement. The next step is probably the trickiest part of the whole process. With whatever method you have to actually move the uh, robot forward, just give it a little bit of power and observe which way the motor is turning. 
We can see that both of our front motors are turning towards the front, which means they're good. However, if we give a little more power, you'll see our back motors are both turning backwards. So for this step, we just have to make sure that all the motors are turning in the right direction. And in this case, the easiest thing to do would just to be swap the positive and negatives for each motor on the, on the back side of the robot. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, I flipped the wires on the motor shield, so now our rear motor should be in sync with our front motors. And moving forward on the joystick, we'll see that both the rear motors and the front motors are moving in the forward direction. So the next step is to make sure turning is synced up. By turning to the left, we should see the right motors move forward and the left motors move backwards. And it appears the exact opposite is the current case. So we can't flip wires anymore because we already have forward and backwards in sync. So the turning has to be fixed in code. Alright, so we're back in the code and we know that our turning is exactly opposite of what it should be. We know that we're sending, well, our right axis in the driver station is what contains the, uh, the axis for turning. And that's the second axis that we're sending out because it's the second one we defined in the config.txt, which means the one axis is what's controlling our turning as we're receiving it. So to invert the turning again, we simply just have to get rid of the negatives, or well, basically invert the ones as they appear in our robot code, save this code, and re-upload it to the robot. So now that the new code is uploaded to the robot, you're pretty much good to go. You just have to have a chassis and wheels, and this would be a driving robot with a working driver station that you can drive over Bluetooth. Now is when we get into the more advanced stuff, like how do I use more motors? Of course, we're already using all four ports on the Arduino motor shield, so there's not much you can do in that part unless you switch over to a two-motor drive system. If you were to eliminate two motors from your drive system, that gives you two additional motor ports to work with for actuators. Another thing you can do if you still want a four-wheel drive system is to take advantage of the digital pins 15, well, 16, 17, 18, and 19 that you still have on the, uh, on the motor shield here. What you can do is have those pins drive a voltage regulator or, or just a large transistor to switch voltage directly from your battery pack to a, an, an actuator or motor. You can also take advantage of the servos that are attached and have a button or some other axis control the servos. There's a variety of things you can do and it's kind of up to you to figure out what you want to do like to add more functionality to your robot. There's plenty of tutorials out there on how to use servos. All you have to do is incorporate it with the, um, the buttons and the axes you can send through the packages with the driver station.